Yeah. Go kick it live, dude. Kick it live. Quit being a pussy. Uh, go live. We're live right now, bro. Hold on. We're I just want to. Right What's that? We're live right now. 17 seconds in. All right. Hold on a second. I'm, um, I'm trying to figure out something. Let's go live. Okay. So then we can. We can... <laughs> he, he's researching. He's researching right now. Oh. Huh. I'm trying to get some information on this. Hey, while you get some information, look what I'm holding. Yeah, those are nice. Those are nice. You know, Hogan and I were having a conversation. It's a private conversation, but I'm going to try to make sure that people understand because Hogan and I are having this conversation. I Googled the definition of a friend, and it's a person who has a strong liking for or trust in another. Um, a person who is not an enemy. Would you okay. define the conversation we just had <laughs> At that at all? No, no. no. Would you, I was I was like, privy I, to that conversation, and I don't believe that that would be a definition. It would but need to be a bit, if we get some other thing. What's the definition of a real friend? Someone who is a true friend stands up for you when others try to hurt you emotionally or physically. They do everything they can to make sure that you stay safe. They don't care who is trying to harm you. They will defend you at any time, anywhere. If they can help you. They'll do it without reser reservation or reward. Would you say that, that <laughs> it all aligns with what that person said? No. <laughs> we should screenshot this and make it on shirts and wear it around this guy at all <laughs> times. This, this, this is what a friend is. We'll dance around him like little elves. Do, 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 do. See if he catches on. <laughs> the universe is a weird place. Um Today's my off day, and I've had four shots, <laughs> two shots in to a four shot of espresso. espresso. And I've been watching cop movies with Sylvester Sloan in it, and I'm fucking ready to rip heads off <laughs> in fucking Manchester. <laughs> I am losing my mind. <laughs> Why would you have four shots of espresso to sit on the couch and watch action movies? Because you have no clue what I'm about to do after the show. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want any of this shit. Usually I get on these city bikes and I just hammer as hard as I can. And I fill my body up with lactic acid until I'm at the point of explosion. And then, uh, you know, I get on with my day. And then get more coffee. Uh, I get more. Dude, I'm completely on the European experience. I don't know if you know, but since I'm such a, a world traveler, I've picked up on the fact that you savages over here have like espresso shots about six to ten times a day. And I don't understand because in America, they're like, you should be careful about your caffeine consumption. It'll affect your sleep. Europeans are not only leaner, they are they seem to be healthier. They seem to have a better like social and emotional lifestyle. Like people don't talk about like trauma and anxiety and depression like they do in the United States. And all people do over here is drink fuck tons of beer and coffee. I don't even know if they drink water. That's why I decided to start a supplement <laughs> company in Europe. Because I don't think anybody over here knows what water is. There's water in beer, though, yeah? There is. There is. <laughs> Dude, I went to this. I went to the Hackney Half Marathon, which is one of the biggest um, half marathons or running events in, in the UK entirely. I get over there, and I'm just playing dumb. I'm just like, hey, guys, like, new to this whole thing, like – um. So what is this? They're like, oh, it's a half marathon. And I was like, oh, well, it's one of those. And they're like, well, you know, you run, you know, it's such and such, and it's hard. I was like, what do you drink for one of those? They're like, water. And I was like, you never thought about anything else? They're like, they're like what's anything else? Like, what is there? And I was like, oh, really? And it's amazing, man. Like, I will admit, for the United States, I think – kind of being at the frontier of like health and development, we are the ass end of health and development. We maybe have like the science and the products and the support to be healthy people. But I come over here and I'm just fascinated by how healthy and how good looking and how happy everybody is in comparison to the United States. That's my rant. That's only two shots worth. That's <laughs> like two shots of rant. Wait. So Dina made me a double. I didn't know how to work their fancy espresso machine. So Ryan, uh, Ryan is only out of bed, by the way, Hunter. He just like woke up two minutes ago. Within, within 30 minutes. <laughs> in 30 minutes. 
Well, I have to and say, then, last night I went to bed at probably like ten forty-five, and I slept until eight thirty. I'm the reason why I started getting over here early is because you, like, the first two nights I tried to stay up until like midnight or one, and then you wake up like five the next day, and then all of a sudden you'll have a couple days where you overshoot your normal sleep schedule. You'll sleep really late, and then hopefully by like tomorrow and Friday, like I'm fully on. Yeah. I'm thinking, I don't know. But also, Ryan's inherently a lazy person from what I can tell. Every time I call him, he's dead. He's dead often. He likes sleep. I can't – I don't know. There's all the science that says that sleep's so important, but the most successful and productive people that I know don't sleep at all, and they're totally fine. Margaret Thatcher famously slept like four hours a night. Who? Margaret Thatcher. Thatcher. Yeah. And dude, think about like somebody like Winston Churchill. Winston Churchill used to be drunk all the time. I saw a Winston Churchill statue here. There's fucking statues of this guy around the world. And all he did was drink, probably never sleep, probably did anything else you would give him. And, you know, one of the most famous people in history. People that sleep a lot don't have statues about them. I just see a message popping in there about me winning the race. Yeah. Who? Tattooed climber, only one winner on the screen. It's gotta, be. Left corner. it's gotta be me. It's gotta be. There's gotta be. Um, I don't know if we have a lot of listeners over here in the UK. I'm trying to grow it. I'm trying to make sure. I don't know if they do podcasts over here. Is that is that something, Tom? Yeah, yeah. Really? Lots of lots of like High Rocks podcasts and stuff, and running podcasts and any amount of them. You've been on all of them at this stage. I guess that's a good point. I'm wondering <laughs> if anybody listens to them, though, is the real thing. We were pretty that's, tuned, that we were, I don't know. We were pretty tuned up the other night, and they recorded me uh, riding a, a bike around town for the Rock Zone podcast, and I was like, do not put that content out. And I don't know if they're going to or not. But, um, yeah, I've been on a fair amount of them. I think, honestly, the, the media for, for our sport needs to get way better. I wouldn't consider this to be a High Rocks podcast, by the way. It's just totally random that I have a podcast and totally random that I do High Rocks and that you guys do High Rocks. But I don't want this to be associated with it at all. I mean, Hunter, we did have uh, – what was it? He was a, a wood climber, like a thunder. Yeah. 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 We've had the whole gambit. I, you know, I started this podcast because I think the morning is like the most important time of the day. I wake up like a rocket ship every single day with like power and tension. And I just take on the world and morning with radio. It's like that morning, morning energy. And I wanted to interview people around the world that like fascinated me. And I kind of wanted to figure out what their thing was. And, um, you know, obviously I don't interview you, Ryan, because you sleep until like midday. <laughs> You know, he's also working to midnight so he can answer, get, get everything done with those 11 p.m. emails and say, Get him a builder. Yeah. yeah. Last I get so, I'm like, da, da, da. only like two two words in the, all my emails. Send builder. Yeah. Send builder. <laughs> Send builder. You know, you one of the most sense. popular videos that we've ever posted in our shorts was a video of me making fun of people that sleep really late in the day. And anytime we post like controversial content, uh, these people just get like really, really upset. Um, and they got really upset about like the sleep thing. They're like, why, why do you get to control sleep? I don't know a lot of super successful people that sleep really late. I don't know anybody that does. If you're not up by 6 a.m., you're a degenerate. You need to be up by six and slam and quadruple espressos. <laughs> yeah. Who's, NF who's NFCC rules? I think I think I don't put my real name on here enough. Um, I'm the other Ryan, not the Ryan Kent that you all know. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I think the thing that we want to kind of discuss today is race predictions, post race excitement. Um, what's going on with Builder? The new single serve packets. We've got so many good things going on, but I'm going to put this. I'm just going to be a guy who asks questions. I'm not going to weigh in at all. But <laughs> everybody thinks I'm the biggest asshole in the sport. Um, Tom, I'll let you weigh in on the female side of things for predictions and some times. Top three. Well, times. God, times is going to be impossible to pick. 
But prediction wise, on the female side, an American clean sweep. Three really? Americans, three Americans on the podium. Who? I think it'll be um, Lauren. Not in this particular order, but I think it'll be Lauren, Meg, and I think, um, what's the doctor's name? Alandra? Am I saying yes. that right? I think she'll sneak in there now that Michaela has dropped out. I think I she'll just... get, get ahead of Miriam, the, the Swiss girl. So clean sweep for the Americans and the female side. I, I, I only person I put in instead was Linda. Linda, if she's on, is pretty tough. Like Linda almost won last year. Yeah. You you'd pick her over Alandra? I think so. Yeah. But you know, it's one of those kind of people you roll the dice on them. Um and also like Lauren Weeks, I think she still has a very good chance of winning. I I, I like Megan. I think she's extremely talented. But I've competed with and around Lauren Weeks for a long time, and she's the scariest person on the planet. You think experience <laughs> takes over at one point because Megan Jacoby is is you know coming into the place with a fifty eight you know sub sixty, but then that experience takes over for Lauren Weeks, where she's like, I've been here, I know what it's like, and just hammer through. Yeah, like I'll give you an example in the CrossFit Games. Matt Frazier showed up. Matt Frazier was the best CrossFitter in history, technically. Yeah. And he showed up and was just like whooping on people. And then, you know, he ended up beating uh, – Rich Froning ended up beating him out, and then Rich Froning retired. And then it was still like his second kind of rookie year, and it was clearly like his for the taking. And then Ben Smith, who had been around for a long time waiting for his position up against Rich Froning, beat him out. And it's like Matt Fraser since then has shown that he's like clearly the best guy, but it takes a while to get that down. There's these people that just like have that, that reservoir and experience. They've been around for such a long time. They're just like when it's, it, it really does matter. They use their experience and they just edge out that person who's the rookie with the talent. And right now I think Megan's in the position of being the rookie with the talent. And the laps could, could play a big role here. Like twice yes. Megan has messed up the laps in races, and now we're going to have more laps than ever. Yeah, it's so four it's, laps. So, oh my gosh. Yeah, so that could could play a role. Hopefully, I it doesn't. Back everything goes I ever on. said about the Germans being good at engineering. <laughs> like, about that. We, we barely give them two and a half. Let's up the ante and take them to four laps for the race. Four and a bit. Four. <laughs> that, that's really, it, that's becoming the same distance per lap basically as an indoor track. Yeah. And I looked up there just before we come on, to, did a bit of research for this. So the men's world records for the indoor mile versus the outdoor mile, it's five seconds quicker outdoors. And that's on a track with like nice flowy bends. We could have four 90 degree angles. You so you're really that. looking at it slowing down anywhere from seven to 12 seconds per kilometer slower. For every single run, dude, I think so I think, I think, I think yeah. it's a second per turn. So I think you're looking at 16 seconds slower. Per at, oh yeah, because think yeah. about it, dude. You're only getting 60 meters about. Yeah. You're only getting about 60 meters, and then you're like, ah, ah, yeah. ah and you know it's not going to be a perfect freaking rectangle. It's square. No. It's going to be a rectangle. So you're going to probably get like a hundred meter stretch and then you're going to get like a 20 or 30 meter stretch or something like that. And yeah, it's so much harder to run a kilometer that way. Like it's easy to just run a kilometer and a given pace, whether that's 330 or 340 or 350. But to run a kilometer fast, slow, fast, slow, fast, slow makes it like really, really difficult to hold that pace. Yeah, I think... Um... It takes the runners out. It takes the best runners and makes them weak. It makes the people who are a little bit more like, I think you're looking at people like John Wynn now. And uh, that French guy that I raced against in Barcelona who are not like spectacular runners, but are just, just dog shit tough. Yeah. I bet you they're going to start crawling up. Um, I think, you know, someone like Dylan Scott, ends up becoming more successful because of uh, it's just going to be a longer race. Even though yeah. he's kind of a, he's like a tortoise. He just 
goes forever. <laughs> um, I don't know. Who, who cares? It will all work out. So you picked your time. Right, what, do, what are your votes? Um, Tom Hogan, number one fan. Oh, for women? Yeah. Um, probably Meg, Lauren, and well, well let's throw back in there. Uh, Chris Rogalski. She's going to come back. Maybe not get number one, but she'll be in top three. So playing into what I was just saying earlier, I would say you're right about that because now all of a sudden that you think She's about got that experience of winning number one last year, all oh. those extra turns, dude, kind of takes away somebody like Megan or just being like a sprint, like a really fast person. Well, Miriam is probably the best at the stations out of the women's field. She's probably better than everybody at the stations. So if you're really she taking the runs out, yeah. yeah, she'll be a tank. Yeah, so like it plays into her hands then if people can't run. And there's the factor of, I said to you yesterday, it's hard to chase someone when you can't see them. And now people are going to be in your line of sight all the time. So the chase impact right. will work harder. Are they, are they going to have it set up like last year to where you're going to the your, your same lane, your same station, so the, the crowd no. that's around? <laughs> No, it'll be set up like it was for the Europeans this year. So the first person in goes into lane one, the second person in goes to lane two, and okay, just, so fil just filters lane. back. So there's okay. no actually assigned lane this time, which is better because there's someone always beside you to work off then. Yeah, we're on. Come on in. God, this the is boss has arrived. Oh, the boss right, is here. On the clock, Dean. I swear, I, I clocked in. I've been working hard. <laughs> uh, I know. I keep track of everything. Don't worry. Busting my chops. Busting my chops, boss. We're. What are your votes? Because we're just going through it now. What are the top three females? Um, I'm gonna go. Megan, Linda, Lauren. Ooh, Sam was Hunter. Sam oh, three really? is Hunter. Sam three is Hunter. Yeah. I said Chris Rogalski is going to come through. Really? Yeah. Uh, she's she's might be a bit tired. Yeah. Well, she's she's uh, from what I've seen on her Insta, she's going to two other races leading into this. Yeah, yeah, and then flying like back to back weekends. Yeah. Did I miss the men's prediction? She, did. she won. She won that sprint in Big Bear. Mm. Yeah, I mean, she's got to travel and could take it over. Although she's young. Fuck why. When I was when I, when I was her age, we were flying around going to races, sometimes two races in the weekend, and we would literally uh, we probably do two to three races a month. When we were about 10, 15 years ago running, we used to go to the find the ten k road races that used to have the biggest prize money, and it was a way. It was the only way we could afford to like bring the kids on holidays and stuff. So we used to go and pick up the road race money on a Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday. And we used to put this on, honestly, we used to put all the prize money in a pot that we weren't allowed to touch. And it was only to be used to bring the kids on holidays. What could you guys pull in a year? From racing? Yeah. Back then? Yeah, what was the, what was the pot size when you would go to the 10Ks? It depends. <laughs> Yeah, with what? Martins, when we started doing the Martins and all, we were probably looking at somewhere fifteen to twenty thousand or somewhere around there. Per the year, or per race. No, no, per the year. Were on, these are only like small time races. That's why you could go to one every night, basically. Because you could win them without. You could just win them. Test. You could win them in like thirty four minutes or thirty three highs for ten k, and just go to the next one the following day. You never really had to murder yourself. I should have been in your business. Mud running was cheap. <laughs> so is high rocks. Yeah, but when you gotta feed your kids, you know, you gotta race hard. <laughs> if if All mommy right. and daddy had a bad race, we didn't eat that week. <laughs> yeah, that was before Builder were paying like hundred grand a year salaries to us. It's a good job. It's a good job when you have a rich benefactor from the United States. Yeah. <laughs> so what's, oh, what's uh, the Hey Hunter, I, I got to watch I got to watch uh every episode except for the final for the world's fittest family. We just cruised through all of the the, the the TV show that Tom and Dina were on with the kids. Ireland's Fittest Family. Yeah, Ireland's Fittest Family. We could probably win the world's Fittest Family. Might be a stretch. Thing. That one's a stretch. 
I could adopt a couple kids and come whoop your guys' ass. <laughs> Don't test me now. I'll loan you two kids. I'll I've got loans. Say, hey, I need you to get shit out of these other Irish. They take it. Pay them potatoes. Um, so now let's go into male predictions. I'm not allowed to weigh in. Um, we'll start with Dina. Okay. You want to go first? No, no, go okay, me. Um, okay. Well, I'm going to go third. I'm going to go Ryan. Second, I'm going to go Alex. And first, I'm going to go Hunter. That's a disgrace. You didn't even put me up there at all. You didn't even say we're close fourth. Oh, thanks. I got four. Always number one in my eyes. <laughs> I'll add an extension to my part of the podium so you can stand up there. <laughs> Behind you. Cardboard check. <laughs> oh, damn, dude. Really? So you like going, right? uh, we're going, we're going uh, Tom, then yeah. Ryan Kent, then Hunter. Tom. Are you just making I take, me I take third. I take third. <laughs> Tom, number one. He might, be say, he might be saying that because we're giving him a bed to sleep in tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Make him sleep on the couch like I had to. <laughs> So I went the whole an American sweep in in the women's, so maybe a European sweep in the men's race. What? <laughs> Interesting. What's here? <laughs> nah, there there'll be one American in there, I guess. Um, David. I I just I do think that travel plays a big part in these things. I don't think people compete exactly as they do at home when they have to travel away. So I think that does play into the European hands a little bit. Um, you did. You did last week. Yeah, I'm built different, though. Yeah, I think Tom's the underdog. <laughs> Tom's raced like 70 times this year. I'm <laughs> just dogging like that. So I will go in third place. In third place, Alexander. In second place, Tim. Really? And in first place, <laughs> as much as it kills me to say it, Hunter. <laughs> that has got to be painful. Tim in second. I think so. I think. Wow. Yeah, Tim has raced a lot this year, and he's he's probably progressed more than anybody else over all those races. Like, mm -hmm. and in the in the Europeans, he kind of showed a bit of maturity where he came from behind to get the second place. He didn't let it let his head go because he wasn't there for the whole race and just kept pushing, did his own thing and eventually got second. I think that'll help him for this race. Mm. Yeah. Hunter, do you have the headbands with you? Yeah. See these headbands. Look at wow. this. You know what else we're going to have there? Some crew wow. neck. Is that a, is that a builder <laughs> turtleneck? <laughs> I don't know. I call them a crew neck. Hoodies? Some regular hoodies. Oh. Regular tees. Hey. Drawstring bags or booty bags. Oh. Man. This is getting nice. Oh, we got tanks in here. Oh, this one. Are you guys moving or are those just boxes full of builder? Those that are... whole room was full of boxes. That's not even funny. This was my sitting room. Your sitting room. <laughs> So sorry to interrupt such an incredible pastime. <laughs> <laughs> so what's your predictions? You need to weigh in somewhere. You can't just say it. I'm not weighing in on it. Oh. Yeah. Uh, Women tanks. Oh. I, I had it being myself, then Kent, and then uh, Ronkovic or Tim. I think it's the same exact podium as last year. Ron, like, kind of like I said before that Rogovic has been on the podium actually more than anybody. Is that true? I think so. Yeah. Maybe he's tied with me for the amount of podium appearances, appearances at, um, at world championships. I got to stop saying, um, so he's mm -hmm. very experienced and that's one of those kind of things. Like, you know, at ch championships, uh, all of a sudden things will just be slow. The reason why Prefontaine didn't get to medal at the Olympics because it was like really slow. And then all of a sudden he didn't go for it and do what he wanted to. So he 
played with the pack rather than playing at the pace that he wanted to. And then next thing you know, he got like out kicked and I think he took fourth at the Olympics. Yeah. So it's one of those kind of things where experience is so important. These kind of things, you know, in world championships, I've done treadmills. I've done big long courses in Leipzig. I've done, you know, the grid style race, which was in Vegas, which was in like a very slippery kind of weird floor with a bunch of weird pissant turns. And now all of a sudden we've got this crazy square and you just have to know based on the way your body feels, how you're going to execute. And same with Ronkovich. He's been there for almost all of those as well. So Did you, talk about the game? you got to understand that's a big difference. So you take somebody like Tim, who's just keeps on getting better, but maybe doesn't have the same amount of experience. It makes it tough to take someone like Michael, who is probably the biggest risk taker and has the biggest reward opportunity. And he could just blow it or he could just swing a bat and get a home run. Like I think he, I, I, I DM him. People think I don't like him. I DM him. I say, man, congratulations. Like he's the most improved person I've seen this year. And now Tim's right up there too. Uh, you know, if you looked at last year compared to this year, if you really look at the numbers, nothing's moved really that much. Everybody has moved forward, but they've moved forward together rather than separately. It's not like I went up tremendously and everyone stayed the same. It's not like anybody has markedly moved. And even that, it's hard to know, right? Because some of these people did these courses. It's hard to know if they actually did move up as much or they just happened to get lucky, like... Barcelona was a magic carpet. I actually had somebody carrying me the entire way. <laughs> and uh, my times that were miraculous were done in a space-time continuum. So, <laughs> imaginary ghost pulling you forward. That space-time continuum makes that number kind of hard to measure or trust. But I think it's going to be amazing to see um, the men's race, how it all comes together and it's a level playing field for these certain people, certain times. I think it's really going to be interesting um, because things like four-minute PBs and stuff, uh, do they exist? Well, the, time, the times don't matter because the last, the last three times are Sandy, Dylan, and McGee, I'm pretty sure, and they're not going to end up the last three people. No, they're not. But I'm talking about people that are in the elite from an amazingly fast PB time that they've done once. That would be an interesting race because we're there. Everyone's talking about how the qualification is not fair, right? And that the system yeah. needs to change. And I think yeah. if anything will prove that, it'll prove how the results of the elite fifteen race will prove if the system is broken or not. Yeah. <gasps> Yeah, well, whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I. Courses, it's, not horses. It's a sport. You know, you just got to play the sport rather than complain about the sport. That's why I always say I got in a lot of trouble when I announced Battle Bunker. You know, when I was listing out the rules. I said, guys, the best way to beat the rules is to beat everybody else. And people took offense to it. They're like, Hunter's not, not sensitive enough to my needs. <laughs> Run and fast. It's, 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 worry it's, about if I had. You know, if I was a coach for a little league team, I say, guys, don't complain. I was like, I just want you to beat the other team and then it will all work out. All of your fears will be suppressed by smacking the shit out of that ball and whooping the crap out of the other team. And if they throw a ball at you, you got to catch it. That's how you get them out. So you just got to find ways to beat people rather than beat the rules, beat the people, Um, beat the course. Like, you know, last year, I remember people got so emotional. They pulled that plate off for us. We were supposed to have, you know, whatever, six plates, and they pulled one off. People were, like, hysterical. I was like, well, we're all still racing the same sled, so what's the difference? Um, you know, so we'll, we'll never know. But quite excited about it. Um, moving on to the next chapter. Uh, more importantly, we got – Saturday, which is going to be the open field. And we were, want, we're going to look at some predictions there. We've got Kyle and George racing doubles for men's 34. And we got Dina racing um, the 16 to 18 category. We got, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Is there a 16 to 18 category? I think it's like, there is. It's like 16 to 24, though, I think. Yeah. It's a bigger category, but there is a 16 one. 
Um, yeah, there's some, and we've got like lots of builder ambassadors racing. Um, of course, Bo unfortunately slipped out of the Elite 15 after Hong Kong. So he's racing age group, and I can only imagine he is going to tear that course up. I can't yep. see anybody getting close to him. Um, and then there's James racing age group as well. Yep. And then who else? We've got um, lots of builder ambassadors racing, mixed doubles. So well, we have Rebecca in the pro race too. We have Becky in the elite, race. In the elite 15, yeah. She's, she's gone really well. Hopefully she'll have a good race. Um, so they'll be good. And of course, they'll be all decked out in their builder stuff, which other people can get as well. Can you guys list, because I don't know the exact details, and that way we'll get the content, we'll grab it, and then we'll post it up on Instagram. What are the yeah, exact yeah. details for our meetup? We're giving a meetup free giveaway. Everybody gets a water bottle with some of our free single serve packets given away to you guys. And if you get there in time, we'll give you guys free swag. So, you know, we're going to have a line out the door. You guys are going to want to get there early enough so you can guys, guys can get this stuff. We only have a handful of 100 water bottles, and that stuff will go quickly. And we only probably have about 50 to 100 shirts in each in each and every size. So it's going to be gone. So, um, Dina, Tom, I'm going to let you guys run yep. with this list, what we got going on. It's uh, in yeah, a bar called Rain, which is basically straight across the road from, from the venue. And we'll be there on Saturday from 1, 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. Yeah. So if you can call over before your race, after your race, whenever. If you're just on your way to the venue, pop in, grab mm -hmm. some stuff, grab a free sample, a T-shirt, a water bottle, as Hunter said. And the more um, people that can come by, the better. Yeah, we'll be at the Hilton on Friday um, before the Elite Race. So if you want to even check us out there and then wear your apparel to the watch the elites racing there's some um, really nice gear so there's lots lots for you to take advantage of getting and of course try the product if there's anyone left that hasn't tried it yet um you can get your hands on it the single serves you missed the beginning half of this conversation where i went to the hack me half marathon and not People even barely even knew about anything besides water. I was asking if they put anything in their water. Nobody in the running community out here knows about it. Not even our product. I didn't mention that I was affiliated with Builder at all. I was playing dumb. There's just people don't know that you put electrolytes in your water. They don't know you put carbs in your yeah, water. Yeah, and that's, that's the struggle I find, um, especially when I come, people talk to ask me about Builder, et cetera. It's the education of getting people to realize why to take it. I mean, once people try it once, they're just, they're, that's it. They're a repeat customer. It's just over and over again. Um, I've got people messaging me all the time saying, oh my God, I let myself run out. How long is it going to be? I'm like, it won't be that long. Just order 24 hours. Um, but people notice straight away when they're training on it and when they're training off it. So it's just finding a way to educate people into to the benefits of it is the thing. Because as I said, once they try it, they're on it. We should pull it off the market for like two months and freak people out. It'll be kind of like the potato famine. We'll call it the builder famine. People will lose their mind. Ah, my children. There's a hydrated. I'm dying. People will lose their minds. I know. I what? sent a, a, a full box to one of our retail. So our so gyms can, can retail um, the builder products, obviously. And one of the big gyms that retail it is Forders in Birmingham. And their box actually just got stopped for some reason um, for a day or two. And Rachel and Darren were both on to me, leaving me messages. Every day. <laughs> Where's my box? I'm, I'm, I don't even know if I can get through the next training session. <laughs> so we had to uh, get them some, a quick fix before their box arrived two days later. But that, and that's not exaggerating. That's what happens when people find themselves out of it. So, I'm yeah. proud. I'm proud to say that it's really spreading. Thanks to you guys. I uh, don't eat or drink anything else. Yep. Totally I've live on builder. I, I stopped because last time I came to Europe, I got um, some kind of weird food poisoning type thing. And uh, now I don't eat any more street meat. Nothing. <laughs> Straight and narrow now. I won't touch anything out here. I'm terrified. Nothing. No dairy products. Nothing. No? No, no 10 yogurts at a time? Nope. My life's changed. I'm a reformed man. <laughs> Dude, you have no idea how bad it was. I literally came back from Europe. I came over here, did the tour with you guys. Then I did my own little personal tour and I picked it up somewhere in like the South of France. 
And I personally, I, I bloated for like seven days and then I did not have a normal gut for about three to four months. I am terrified. Oh, you must have got a parasite or something. Something. You know, I didn't really ever get the full data on it because they wanted me to take a dump in a cup and ship it into them. And that that in in its own process was quite a challenging thing for me to overcome. But then they were like, yeah, it's going to take about 28 days to get the results back. I was like, so I have to poop in a cup and then sit there and think about the fact that I pooped in a cup for 28 days and then you'll give me data on it. I was like, I, I think I'll pass. <laughs> Skip that one. All I did was eat baby aspirin and, uh, you know, just let my body ring it out on its own. So how do you think Kyle and, and George will do? I mean, they're, I love my friends, but they're in a tough position. That is such a, that is such a dog fight of a category. There are some really jacked fit dudes between the ages of 30 and 40. That's like the prime age for this kind of sport. And all those dudes that are just, didn't make it pro didn't want to make it pro that are just full of piss and vinegar or in that category of sandbagging hey What's i that? could probably make it in a lot of sandbagging like they probably could have made it in pro but they would have been on the lower half end uh to last but then sandbag the race didn't get it so then they're going open and then that jumps them up to the top yeah i, I you know, there's, I know just through training in CrossFit for such a long time that there are CrossFit teams, athletes that could be individuals and are monsters and they just like being team. Yeah. So, you know, I, the best bet that I have for those guys is that they come through and they barrel through the sleds at a rate that like most of these skinnier European fast guys can't handle. Mm -hmm. And hopefully they hold on. Well, that Last would be a thing because it's heavier weights for the first time ever in double. Yeah. That's that's mm -hmm. their best bet. Last year, um, damn, I said um again. Last year, Kyle raced with Ben, and Ben dragged ass, and Kyle was just hanging out there. I've been hanging out with George, and we did some workouts. George is in way better shape than he was last time we hung out, so hopefully George has got the beans to get through this thing. Kyle, I know, is putting in tons of work, so I, I think that they're in a good position I don't know. Podium would be a stretch, but I think it's possible. Winning, I don't think, is anywhere in the cards for them. Mm. You know, I watched the guys cross who won that age category last year, and they were port like from Portugal, and they were more jacked and shredded than I was. I was like, I don't know who the hell made these freaks, but <laughs> yeah. Yeah. they were, they were and monsters. Tom, Tom and I will have quite a hard race the next day as well because I think there's four other elite men also doing a mixed doubles the next yeah. day. Are you racing again the next day, Tom? Yep. If he can make it out of bed to tie his laces, I can, I, I'm yeah. hoping I can get him to the start line. If I can walk. We've booked in a 20 kg cabin bag uh, just to um, bring recovery boots with us. <laughs> you guys are weird. I will personally get hammered on Friday, and then I, I don't – I don't know if I'm going to have the stamina to sit there because I'm going to be barking and hanging out with you guys all day long. I would not want to go out and party – on um on Saturday night, my big night's gonna be Friday. Two gonna be hanging all day Saturday. Hunter himself and I on a night out. Everyone's gonna be racing Saturday. Yeah, I don't give a damn. <laughs> I've just reached <laughs> the point where I have been going to these races for twelve years now and getting pissed drunk afterwards. And I recognized the night after the race is never the most fun night because everyone's so tired and they're dragging ass and they've been sitting there, their adrenaline's been up and everything like that. So I'm going to, I'm going to get my mojo out on Friday. You got to be at the race on Saturday, supporting the builder. Athlete That's, what I'm gonna do. That's what I'm going to do. That's what I'm going to do. And then I'm saving my energy because on Monday it's George's birthday party. George's George turns 40. Mm. On Monday. Well, not Monday, but we've we've declared that it's going to be his, his birthday on Monday. We're going to this bar called The Ship. I don't know, but I've heard rumors about it, and it's just debaucherous and filthy. So, yeah, you got to understand, if you're a good gambler, you don't go all the days in a row. You go hard day one, then you pull back, and you think. <laughs> think about life. Contemplate. Contemplate. And then you go in on day two after a skip day, all in. All in. <laughs> Well, we're, we're all in for five days in Milan for Jay Fitz's wedding. 
You guys, yeah. for people who are supposed to be running a company, you guys take a lot of vacations. Tom was just in Hong Kong. Now you're going to make her own schedule. It's you minions that I have to keep an eye on. <laughs> I'm the only one working hard over here. I had to carry <laughs> these things in my bag all the way from the United States. Oh, that might cost you a couple of seconds, you know. Bruises I have on my shoulders from the extra weight in the bag. I didn't even see a request for Monday off, Dina, for this party he's going to. Oh, it's too late now. If he hasn't put his request in, it's denied. <laughs> guys, <laughs> All right, so you guys have given the details of where we're meeting everybody up. I just wanted to make sure that we got that out there. Um, we got some race predictions afterwards. Let's talk about life after world championships. Where are you guys going? What are you guys doing? We'll end the show on that. Tell me some exciting stories or you guys don't even give a damn. Well, on the Monday, we we fly, or on Sunday, actually, we fly out to Milan for Jay's wedding for a few days to do, Denver. and I'm not going to bring, probably for the first time in years, I won't even bring any gear with me. No training, just drink. Five days of drinking. <laughs> Take That's and press. Awesome. And then come back and, I don't know, plan some crazy ass races that are just uh, wild and out I there. I was looking at that Starvation Ironman. Yeah. Are you doing that because it's the only qualifier for Norseman, or are you just doing that by coincidence? No, we're doing it to qualify for Norseman. Ah, okay. There's so 7,000 feet of elevation. I'm not on scared. The, on the run. <laughs> <laughs> I can take it. You know, I got extra lungs in these biceps. <laughs> um, 7,000 feet of climbing just in the, in the run? Yeah. Run alone. Just in the run. <laughs> yeah. I didn't even know that. No big deal. Like I don't do any research. Me. I just show up and I whoop ass. Okay, Dina. Okay. I just That's got a, 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 a I just got a message from Jay saying you better be bringing your runners to Italy. I'm not no runners. Yeah. Drinking five days of beer, Jay. It's bringing his props. Hear hear this out though. I'm hiking the Appalachian Trail from uh, June 12th until like the first, fourth, or fifth. Uh, first. Uh, something around there on July. And I think I'm going to be hiking like 12 to 14 hours a day. So that's going to build up my stamina. I don't have to train specifically at all. Swimming's for pussies. Biking, run that a bunch. Running, we already know I'm the best. So it's all about just accumulating hours. So 20 days in a row of traveling 14 hours, 15 hours at a time on my feet, I'm going to be a monster. And I'm going to lose – you're, you're gonna lose a lot of weight to where it's like you aren't gonna even have to carry that much muscle up the mountain. My ass cheeks are gonna look like a hot air balloon. They'll you're gonna start to flying up the air. mountain like powder toast, man. Just dude, just pistons. <laughs> yeah, so I'm quite excited about that. And then I'll probably do some specific stuff to get ready for the Denmark or whatever the Copenhagen Ironman. So you know, quite excited. I might do that one with you. That's flat. Are you doing that? Yeah, I might jump into that one. Not you, Hogan. Are you doing that? Yeah, I might do that one. It's flat. No hills. You could, you could basically take a nap on the bike. You could lazy river the swim, just catching the back draft of somebody. And then you know what? <laughs> Shuffle the marathon. That's I did that, be I did last that before. Time, in the That's the time to do. I did that before in a triathlon. Dina hates this story. So the first triathlon I ever did, I could not swim at all. I could I could swim enough that I wouldn't drown. And I went down to this race, and Dean had been training for it. Now, now was... tell the proper story. The, no. It was a it was a linear river that you could down, just literally downstream. downstream. And I basically I got into the river, and I lay on my back and got washed down. I didn't swim one stroke, and I seven hundred and fifty meters down the river there were steps to get out, and I stood up on the steps, and who was beside me? Dina. After trying to swim the whole way down. So I, I think I better I crossed the mat first and better by one second on the swim the second. Only time you've ever been to swim. <laughs> only time. Still beat you. I beat you without even trying. This is impressive. <laughs> Kyle. It's it's not fucking impressive. Impressive. Kyle literally spent like the better part of a year and a half training to swim, and he beat me by only two minutes, and I did maybe like five swims leading up to it. There what you was go. your Ironman swim, actually? What was your Ironman swim time? It's either 68 minutes or 70 minutes. Well, which is it? Because I'm in between them two. 
<laughs> I don't know. Go with 6,800 just to piss her off. 68 it is. <laughs> you know, as soon as I got done with that race, SeaWorld contacted me and they wanted to make me an attraction. <laughs> they were so impressed that, that we've never seen a body like that move before in the water. Right. You could be a star. Yeah. They wanted to start me out with a big salary. I had to turn it down because of the direction we were going with Builder. Yeah. But let me tell you, it was very impressive. Uh, very, very what, impressive. What the hell are the two of these doing? I don't know. Uh, working. Working, working, working. Yeah, oh. well... We're doubling our time here, sending in messages, looking up stuff. People you guys are, are managing to look for gear my, to see what it is. You guys are looking up my Iron Man times because I hear you slapping the keyboard as loud as possible. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Ryan does this every single podcast and he thinks that we can't hear it. And then you listen to it after the fact. And it <laughs> sounds like there was like a 10 year old trying to learn drums in the background, <laughs> like a goddamn <laughs> percussion war. Um, what are you predicting for this Iron Man then? Are you going to try to beat the last one, or is it just... Oh, no, I'm getting under... Vegas? I have to get under 10-20. I have to get you, want, you want to hear the predictions? I have the predictions from it's you, you and... You and uh, yeah. Okay, Hunter Iron Man time. I think it's under 10-25 or something. Come on. All right. What's going to get you kill? What's going to kill you is what's killed you last time, is what uh, Rich says. So get off the bike, and legs are going to be shit. Um, starvation, rich predictions is 11 hours, 45 minutes, or do not finish. Hunters was, uh, sub 12 for sure. And similar swim an hour, 15 or less a bike, six hours or six fifteen, and a marathon. I want to break four hours. So the Denmark Ironman, rich said 10 45 hunter said nine fifty five. So anything, oh, above no, I, said, I, so we split the time though. We split the time difference. So anything above 1020, Rich wins. Anything below 1020, Hunter wins. So uh oh, that was a timestamp. So the bet is if Rich wins, he gets a 16-year-old Lagavolin uh scotch, and Hunter wins some Johnny Blue. I thought you were gonna cut that off at 16-year-old. I was gonna say that's just fucking we're gonna get in trouble here. <laughs> So that 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 crazy starvation one, that's going to be high 13 hours or somewhere in the 14 to 15 hour range. There's I'm no not, I'm way. Not to, I'm not trying to race that. I'm trying to finish it. Like I just, it, I'm going to do it because we invited all of our friends. I've actually invited some people. You signed up that. Austin without him even knowing. Yeah. I asked him, he goes, I don't know. Hunter signed me up and I didn't even know that I was going to do it. It's by far the hardest race in the United States, and it's going to kill Austin. And I, you know, I'm not saying that because I want Austin to get killed. I'm saying that because all of us are going to die. It's going to be insanely hard, and it's just a journey. I think it's a 15 hour cutoff time. Yeah, I think it'd be somewhere in the 13 to 14 hour range for that one. It's just crazy elevation game. <laughs> You're talking yeah. about a 5 530 margin at the end of it. Wow. What's that? You're talking probably five hours or five and a half hours for that marriage. You just clicked it. Uh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> I just told you I'm going to be hiking the Appalachian Trail for that distance every single day with weight on my back, mm -hmm. you know, fighting off bears, <laughs> hairy women in the woods. It's going to be dangerous. <laughs> I'll, be, I'll be trained up for sure. <laughs> Really right, I've got to go. Some of us just don't have all day to have a little. This is where we capped it off. We just wanted to figure out what everyone was up to. And okay. um, you, know, you didn't even hey. give us anything, by the way. Hey, so so uh, Rain Bar, where Builder's going to be for the one to four on Saturday. Mm -hmm. uh, 80 Great Bridgewater Street in Manchester. So it's literally two seconds away from the venue. You can't miss it. I'm going to link it all up on the Builder Instagram anyway. So you can check it out there. And I'm also going to put up some great pictures of the swag that's there for free. It's literally for free. All you have to do is come and get it. You can pick Hunter's brain about the product and taste it. Take some samples. Yeah, free water bottle. Free water How bottle. Yeah. One of them? I spend a lot of money. <laughs> oh, you know. All right, guys. Okay. I'm very mean with water bottles. Right, I'll see bye you guys bye. all tomorrow. Yep. Adios. See you later. Bye.